हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकलेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द पार्ट फोर फॉर द ए आर एस नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस पेपर एंड टूडे इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द एग्रीकल्चर टॉपिक विच इज प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ क्विक नोट्स वी आर गोइंग टू नो अबाउट द प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज विच इज इन द सिलेबस ऑफ द ए आर एस नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस पेपर अदर देन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस दैट द सिलेबस इज ऑलमोस्ट सेम एज द यू जी सी नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस पेपर बट दिस पार्ट इज डिफरेंट दैन द यू जी सी नेट एनवायरमेंटल साइंस पेपर दैट इज प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्स विल डील टूडे सो विदाउट वेट लेट स्टार्ट टूडेज वीडियो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज मेड बाय प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज सो दिस टर्म जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज रेफर्स टू एनी बायोलॉजिकल मेटेरियल विच कंटेन्स द जीन्स और द मेटाबोलिक मेटेरियल दैट मे बी डिराइव फ्रॉम द जीन्स सो हियर इट इज टेलिंग दैट एनी थिंग फ्रॉम वेयर द जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज कैन बी फाउंड एंड कैन बी डिराइव इज नोन एज द प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज सो दैट मेटाबोलिक मेटेरियल कैन बी द सीड कैन बी द लीफ सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स फ्रॉम वेयर वी कैन गेट द जीन्स ऑफ द प्लांट then that thing will be called as plant genetic resources so this plant genetic resources fall within the scope of the nagoya protocol so nagoya protocol you should be knowing that equal and shareable benefits for the genetic resources this nagoya protocol was signed in the year 2010 which is very very important related to the conservation of biological diversity so this is used as per the scope of nagoya protocol for the research and product development of the plants and animal both but today we are going to learn about the plants so here this term that is plant genetic resources are also called as gene pool or genetic stock or germ plasm so these things these notes you should write it down because they are very important and point wise very simply mentioned over here so here to more know about the germ plasm you should know that germ plasm is the living tissue from which new plants can be grown so that living tissue can be from the seeds can be from the leaf or can be from the stem so these all things gene pool genetic stock germ plasm all these things are telling the, about the plant genetic resources so all are almost same so now we will know important features of the plant genetic resources yes these are also important first point is the genetic pool that is the plant genetic resource represents the entire genetic variability or diversity available in a crop species yes all the genes the alleles of the different crop species when they are formed they are together all together they form the genetic variability or diversity of the available crop species which is known as genetic pool so in inside that pool all the alleles will be there all the genes will be there of the particular crop species now coming to the second point the second point states that the plant genetic resources consists of land races modern cultivars obsolete cultivars breeding stocks wild forms and wild species of the cultivated crops so these things among them the important one is the land races so what are the land races so this is telling that a local variety of species of plant that has distinctive characteristics arising from development and adaptation over time to conditions of local geographic region and has the greater genetic diversity than the breeding practices breeding types of crops so you should know that for example rice are having different genetic forms they are breeded genetically breeding are done but land races are those kind of crops of rice they are of local variety growing in a local adapted area so they will be known as land races and those are cultivated by breeding and all they will be called as modern cultivars and wild species which are found in the wild or which are not produced by the alteration of genes or breeding they are called as wild species of rice so this is the example so this tells that all this kind that is the local variety the genetically modified crops the cultivated crops all these things all their genes together will form the genetic pool of that crop species so, so i hope you are able to know what i am telling about that jo bhi crop ke variety ho chahe wo locally naturally produced ho ya fir unhe genetically modified ho 
उन सारों का जीन अगर एक टुगेदर लिया जाता है तो उन्हें जीन पूल या प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्स कहते हैं सो दिस वॉज द सिंपल एक्सप्लेनेशन लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नाउ कमिंग टू द अदर थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट फीचर्स ऑफ द प्लांट जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज यस द जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज जर्म प्लाज्म वी नो सो इट इज कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम द सेंटर्स ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी सो देर आर मेनी सेंटर्स विच आर कलेक्टिंग द जर्म प्लाज्म ऑफ डिफरेंट क्रॉप्स फ्रॉम द जीन बैंक्स फ्रॉम द जीन सेंक्चुरी एज वेल एज फ्रॉम द फार्मर्स फील्ड यस द लोकल वेराइटीज ऑफ क्रॉप्स कैन बी कलेक्टेड द जर्म प्लाज्म कैन बी कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम द फील्ड ऑफ द लोकल फार्मर एंड ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द सीड कंपनीज नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज जर्म प्लाज्म इज द बेसिक मेटेरियल फॉर लॉन्चिंग ए क्रॉप इंप्रूवमेंट प्रोग्राम येस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रूव द क्वालिटी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रूव एनी जेनेटिक मेटेरियल देन द मेन बेसिक थिंग विल बी द जर्म प्लाज्म हेयर इट विल बी जर्म प्लाज्म ऑफ दैट क्रॉप वेराइटी सो इफ यू आर हैविंग द जर्म प्लाज्म द ऑल द कलेक्टेड जीन्स then we can launch a crop improvement program we can do research on them now that thing is finally germ plasm can be indigenous that means it can be collected within the country or exotic species that is collected from foreign countries yes both these are called as the germ plasm collection that is the variety which can be collected from our country or from the foreign countries that is called as the exotic species indigenous from within the country exotic from foreign countries let's move to the next slide now this is also very very important and the questions are coming from here frequent last question that is germ plasm conservation yes we need to conserve and protect the genetic diversity of the crop plants from the genetic erosion so what is the genetic erosion so you know that soil erosion that means the fertile soil is carried away it is wasted so in this way similarly genetic erosion means when the good genes are destroyed or they are not formed in the natural environment this is called as the genetic erosion so we have to protect the crop plants from the genetic erosion with the help of conservation that is germ plasm conservation and how can we conserve we can conserve the germ plasm as we conserve the wild animals and wild species that is with the help of two conservation techniques one is in situ conservation the other is ex situ conservation so in situ ex situ you all will be knowing but in case of the plants it is slightly different and you should know all these points so starting with the in situ conservation so conserving the germ plasm or the gene all the gene pools under natural condition is referred to as in situ conservation and how it is achieved it is achieved by protecting the area from the human interference yes we humans are the major cause for causing the genetic erosion of the crops and we have to protect this our interference is not good so where we should preserve in situ conservation preserves the germ plasm or genetic resources in the area such as natural park or national parks biosphere reserve gene sanctuary and the most important thing which is present in our country is national bureau of plant genetic resources yes this headquarters is located in new delhi you should note it down nbpgr it is helpful in research about the plant genetic resources but what are the demerits of this kind of conservation that is the in situ conservation what are the demerits the demerits is each of the protected area will cover only very small portion of the total diversity of a crop species hence we need several areas to conserve a single species so this is the demerit we need several areas for a single crop species as it covers only very small portion of the total diversity of a crop next thing is the management of this is very very problematic yes the management is not easy in case of in situ conservation and the third demerit is this is a costlier method of germ plasm conservation you should note all these three are demerits of in situ conservation now we will go on to the ex situ conservation so here ex situ conservation means it reserves and it refers to the preservation or conservation of germ plasm in gene banks yes there are gene banks where we can conserve and preserve the genes of the crops 
and this is the most practical method of germ plasm or genetic resource conservation so if question comes which is the most practical method you should select gene banks yes but it has several advantages we will know one by one the first is it is possible to preserve the entire genetic diversity of a crop species at one place which was not in the case of in situ conservation second point is handling of germplasm is also easy in case of gene banks as compared to the in situ conservation and it is also comparatively cheap method of germplasm conservation but how can we conserve in this gene bank so gene banks are not only one kind of category there are five different ways of preserving these genetic resources you should note down number one is the seed banks number two are the plant banks number three shoot tip banks number four cell and organ banks and number five is dna banks so i will now list out some of the important features and you should note down all about these kind of ex situ conservation techniques first starting with the seed banks so what are the seed banks from the word you can sense that it is the technique where germplasm or genes of the crops are stored as the form of seeds yes we should conserve the seeds of these crop plants in order to conserve their genes the germplasm and it is quite easy relatively safe and needs minimum space so but here you should know there are two categories of the seeds where the seed banks are stored number one is orthodox kind of number two is recalcitrant yes what are these two category of seeds preserved in the seed banks you should also note down the first thing is orthodox seeds in the seed banks so these seeds are the seeds which can be dried to low moisture content and stored at very low temperature without losing their viability for longer period yes these seeds should be stored through the cryopreservation technique you also know that by lowering the moisture content and they are not losing their viability their importance their characteristics features when they are stored for the long period but here is the thing that is in recalcitrant type of seeds these are the seeds when we store them in the low temperature then they will lose their characteristics they will lose their viability their quality when the moisture is decreased in below the 12 to 13 percent so they are called as recalcitrant seeds opposite of the orthodox seeds and you should note down some of the examples of orthodox seeds which are seeds of corn seeds of wheat rice carrot papaya pepper chickpea cotton and sunflower but the seeds which cannot regain their viability due to loss in the moisture in the seed banks they are citrus fruits cocoa coffee rubber oil palm mango jackfruit and etc so these are some of the examples you should note down so now let's move on to the next slide so here we will know about the next ex situ conservation type that is the plant banks yes plant banks means from the word itself you can know it is also called as field bank you should note down plant bank is also called as field bank in which an orchard or a field are stored or saved in the plant form of the fruiting trees which are vegetatively propagated crops grown and maintained so here small small plants are stored in a field especially fruit trees and vegetatively propagated crops but there are certain limitation in the plant banks because they require larger areas of preservation and it is expensive to establish the plant banks and to maintain them they are prone to damage from the disease and insect attacks yes if you are storing the seed it will be easier to protect them from the disease and insect attack but the plants are always in contact with the insect and disease so this is difficult next is man-made disaster man-made handling error can also cause the degradation of these kind of plants and also natural disaster if it attacks these fields then our plants will die and we cannot store the genetic resources or the genes of the crop varieties so let's move to the next slide next is the shoot tip banks yes this is the specialized banks for the genetic resource conservation and here the shoot tips or node segments are stored 
so here specifically the nodes and shoot tips of the plants are stored the germplasm and there are certain advantages of these kind of banks that is storing the shoot tips and node segment first is each genotype can be conserved indefinitely free from virus or other pathogens yes if whole plants are conserved then there are chances of attack from pathogens and virus but here in case of shoot tip banks they are indefinitely conserved and they are free from the viruses and other pathogens next it is advantages for the vegetatively propagated crops such as potato sweet potato cassava etc so the examples of the shoot tip banks the crops are potato sweet potato and cassava and here the vegetatively propagated material can be saved from the natural disaster or pathogen attack we have discussed and here long regeneration cycle can be envisaged from merry stem culture so here merry stem culture can be done what is merry stem you should note down this is also very important term merry stem are the type of tissues found in the plants which consist of undifferentiated cell yes these are called as merry stematic cells capable of cell division which is very very unique quality of the plants that is the merry stematic tissue and next advantages of the shoot tip banks is regeneration of the merry stem is extremely easy as compared to the seeds and plants now next advantage point is the plant species have recalcitrant seeds which can be easily conserved by merry stem culture so in the previous slides we learned about the recalcitrant seeds they were not able to survive in the drying and freezing condition in the case of the seed banks but here if that plants are stored in the case of shoot tip banks technology then they can easily be conserved with the help of their merry stematic culture merry stematic tissue so i think this was more than enough and it will be enough for you to write down all these notes so stay tuned for the next parts and i would like to remind you that there is a playlist of all the revision important environmental science mcqs which i am sure definitely will come in the examination of ars net so be sure to watch all these videos keep smiling believe in yourself and all the best for the examination